Welcome to this Math 1 Vocabulary Deep Dive video for the task Getting Ready for a Pool Party. So you should watch this video after you've done the task Getting Ready for a Pool Party in class or watch the Getting Ready for a Pool Party task summary video. So there was a lot of rich vocabulary that came out of the first task of this module, preparing for the pool party. Uh, so I want to take a deep dive into those vocabulary terms, define them all really clearly so that you're feeling ready and prepared as you move forward throughout the rest of the module. So domain and range we've talked about several times up to this point in this course. And so domain is the set of all inputs, x values of a function, and range is the set of all outputs or y values of a function. So let's look at an example to help us put these into practice. So here I have a graph. This is an absolute value function, interestingly enough, which you'll learn much more about in Math 3. So the domain of this function, since it says it's the set of all x values, I'm going to write an inequality based on x. So x is greater than the furthest left that this graph ever goes. And because we have an arrow over here, that means the graph keeps going left forever. So the number that represents all the way over to the left is called negative infinity. And then it's going to be on the right side less than the furthest right this graph ever goes. Again, since there's an arrow, that's going to be positive infinity. So the way that you'd see that written using interval notation is negative infinity to infinity with regular parentheses because infinity isn't a number that we can reach. Um, it's more of a concept or an idea. And so for this one, you might even see it written another way. Someone might say it in words as all real numbers being the domain of this function. The range is the y values. So the lowest that this graph goes is negative infinity because again, these arrows mean it's going down forever. But it does have a peak up here, a highest y value and that's a y value of 5. So we can write the range most simply as y is less than or equal to 5. So if I'm using interval notation, that would be from negative infinity up to 5 with a square bracket indicating that 5 is a part of the range. Next up we have increasing and decreasing. So increasing is the intervals of x values on which the y values of a function are increasing and decreasing is the intervals of x values on which the y values of a function are decreasing. So notice that when we write increasing and decreasing intervals we're writing it based off of the x values but to decide where it's increasing and where it's decreasing we're looking at the y values. So a way that helps me to think of it is I like to think of, think of being a little person riding this graph like a roller coaster. So we always read from left to right when we're reading a graph. So as we do that, this person at first is going up. The y values as they ride this graph like a roller coaster are going up. So this first section of graph, this whole part is going to be increasing. So the x values for that part are from negative infinity all the way over to the left side of the graph to 2. And then from that point it starts going down. And so now if I'm a person riding this graph like a roller coaster, it's decreasing. And so that would be from 2 to infinity. The y-intercept is the point where the graph touches the y-axis and all y-intercepts are of the form 0y. So we can see here our y-intercept is that point 0, 3. And then our x-intercept, I'm abbreviating there, is the points where the graph touches the x-axis and all x-intercepts are of the point x, 0. So some x value, 0. So there's an x-intercept and there's an x-intercept. And this was our y-intercept up here. So we have x-intercept at negative 3, 0. 
and another x intercept at 7, 0. And so notice for a function, you can have multiple x intercepts, but you can only have one y intercept on a function. We have maximum, the point at which a function obtains its largest y value. So this graph does have a maximum up here. I'm, I'm running out of room, so I'm going to move over here. So the maximum, and that was the point 2 comma 5. Now this graph doesn't have a minimum point because it keeps going down forever, as we mentioned, based on these arrows on the end of the graph. So there's no minimum because there's no single point that's the lowest y value on the graph because it just keeps getting lower and lower. So if you're at negative a million, well then you could keep going down to negative a million and one, so on and so forth. So this graph doesn't have a minimum point. Then we have rate of change. So the rate of change, the ratio of change in y values to change in x values on an interval of a function, and slope is specifically the rate of change for a linear function. Um, and it's constant throughout for a linear function. So let's talk about rate of change because we're not dealing with a linear function, we're dealing with absolute value function. So we want to do the ratio of change in y values to change in x values. We've talked about that at several points throughout the course, especially in the last module at the end, um, with the last task of module two. So rate of change, we know we can do change in y over change in x. So let's just pick an interval that we want to look at the rate of change for. And let's say that I want to look at the interval from two to five. So I can look at how much it changed on the y values. So we went down three and over three. So the rate of change on the interval two to five was negative three over three, which equals negative one. And that's just one example. Thank you for watching. I hope that these vocabulary terms are helpful to you as you proceed throughout the rest of the module.